back to the news for uh, the week ending July 27th, 2019. Okay. Let us get to it. And unfortunately, we're going to have to start kind of uh, sad today. Uh, updates following the KyoAni fire. Um, and uh, let's see here. We'll get to the, the stuff here. Um, and feel free to scooch around. The, it's hard to whatever. Well, okay, um, I, get this, I get this lovely piece right here. <laughs> I, can, I can hold it in frame. Perfectly. Um, there's been a huge outpouring of support for Kyoani from fans uh, around the world following fire from last Thursday, so a week ago last Thursday. The Association of Japanese Animators will be opening an account to collect donations. And Right Stuff and Animate will also be collecting donations. Um, with Animate taking donations at their physical store and Right Stuff online, uh, which nice. kind of makes sense. Um, the creator of Flying Witch will be donating a um, portion of both physical and digital sales. Mm. Yep. Of the next manga volume. Um, can any of themselves open the direct bank account to for donations? Wow. Um, so you can kind of go directly there. And they have since raised 620 million yen. Well, I know the as of last week, the last time I paid attention to the Sentai Works, mm. their donation site, they were trying to raise 750,000 and they had mm. 1.42 million. Wow. U.S. dollars. Yeah. Not 750,000 yen. Mm-hmm. 1.42 million dollars. Yeah. So yeah. So they blew out of the oh, water. Oh, yeah. There, there we go. Yeah, Sentai is running a GoFundMe click over $2 million. Yeah. 64,000. Yeah. Nuts. That's... I mean, that's sort of like the, the Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's like all yeah. of a sudden there was millions of dollars that showed up. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. I mean, good, good. Please, please do that. Um, and there's also a non-monetary encouragement going uh, out. Eleven Arts is collecting folded origami cranes, of course, a oh, classic Japanese a thousand crane thing. thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's at their studio in L.A. Um, the website also shares a sunflower print paper template you can print and fold uh, to symbolize a strength, happiness, and positivity. Um, Crunchyroll is asking fans to submit their own personal messages of support and hope through their website. Nice. Um, and the site contains an open form to submit anything basically you want. And the president of Kyoto Animation expressed that the messages from around the world are becoming our emotional support, as he put it. Um, and also told the press in an interview that he's considering demolishing the building and um, setting up a public park there with a monument. Um, because he said basically, the people there probably don't want to stare at that very long. Oh. Um, and people probably don't want to work in the shell of that building very right much either, so. yeah uh, and rebuilding it is going to be sort of questionable as opposed to the, just getting a new building yeah. um, so that just might be the plan well you know again possibility but um, un- uncertain well it's a shame to see it leave its location because of yeah. how it's set in its community mm-hmm. but I, I think anybody would easily feel that 33 people passing away in that fire would not be a good place to be no Exactly. Uh, very sad. Um, so the President Hato has confirmed that the computers and past animation materials in the building were destroyed in the fire. Um, there's been no official interrogation of the arsonist yet due to his own injuries. Um, but he reportedly told the police that Kyoani stole his novel, um, which the president of the studio said he's never even heard of the suspect's name, and no novel under his name has ever been submitted to the studio. So, yeah. Um, sad story all around. Yeah. I think we can just say. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they're still waiting on releasing the names of the people because they're still, like, sifting through records and identifying, you know, remains. Yeah. Um, because that's going to take a little while. And they, you don't, you don't want to be wrong. Yeah. So that's going to take a little bit. Um, I still just, I, I don't understand the externalization of the anger in this fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, it's the world in which we live. Yeah. Exactly. Unfortunately. It is very unfortunate. Uh, so let's move on to something a little little nicer. Uh, we have some announcements of some new anime projects, starting with um, uh, Katakawa Jet Girls. So Katakawa Egg Firm and Marvelous. Marvel? Um, they've announced on Friday they're developing a new multimedia project called Katakawa... Uh, K- K- Kandagawa Jet Girls, excuse me. Um, completely original. It will be included in a game and an anime. And this is part of the... the the general trend that you don't just announce an anime. Right. It's just now a manga. It's like, let's do it all together. Let's just plan for all that all at once. Right. Yeah. Like Dot Hack back in the day. Um, more information <laughs> will be announced on a live stream on August 1st, which will um, go on YouTube, Nico Nico, and Periscope. I haven't heard Periscope much recently. And Nico Nico. Oh, the only yeah. thing I can think of is Nico Nico. Nico. <laughs> That's all I can think of. Um, it's in, uh, August 1st, and that is coming up very soon. Yeah. Wow. So we will, we will get more news on that. Um, Shortly. 
which I'm I'm hoping yeah, for. Yeah, we get till the thirty first. So yeah, we, we've only got a few days left in this month until we get that announcement. Mm-hmm. Now, I I know how much you love the, the following trope of Oda Nobunaga being reincarnated as various things. Yes. Good news. Good news. Um, the new, uh, the, the, uh, a manga about samurai being reincarnated as dogs called Oda Cinnamon Nobunaga has been re- greenlit for an anime. Mm. Can't wait. It'll be a TV anime. His most recent volume, Oda Cinnamon Nobunaga. Um, it's a comedy retelling of the War, War of the States periods, but where the, the, all those generals have been reincarnated in, in the modern era as dogs. Which, I, I just... The only thought that kind of runs through my mind is like, is this going to be a, a, a terribly cute thing where they all run around a dog park and there's like a lead dog who I, like runs mm-hmm. with all the dogs at the dog park and I'm sure that's not what it is. <laughs> I bet it is. I'm, I'm going to say it is because I like that idea more. I, I'm, I don't know whether I feel unfortunate to myself, but I'm probably going to watch at least an episode just because... Mm-hmm. I've seen pretty much all these other ones where they come back as you know all warring states generals come back as something. Yep. Have you know? And I, the the terrible part is, I probably if you said they came back as fish, I'd watch the first episode <laughs> of that too, just because I I want to know what lunacy you possibly could have come up with in this mm-hmm. idea. So yes, and I agree that you can come back in the Edo period. So you can get the the dog shogun Tokugawa Tsunuyoshi. Uh, he was known as the the dog shogun, so he would fit. Fun. Well, I just want to see Masamune Date, the dachshund, yes, uh, right. making a sword <laughs> somehow with no thumbs. Mm-hmm. But you know, I'm, I'm you know pretty good. Just you know, mm-hmm. somehow mm-hmm. hammer it together. Totally, it works. Um, yeah. Now I don't know if you've heard of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, no, I'm unfamiliar with that. Okay, no, it, it's this new thing. Um, <laughs> I've never seen a hairstyle like that. It's been around for 20 <laughs> years now. I feel old. Um, and so Konami has announced a 20th anniversary project in 2020. Um, it will be a new anime to commemorate the 20th anniversary. No footage has been shown yet, um, but the teaser for the series hinted, quote, the history of the Yu-Gi-Oh! anime series will change. They get a new deck of cards? <laughs> sure. Um, dice, maybe? I don't know. They're merging with Magic the Gathering. Ooh. So it's you. It's magic Yu-Gi-Oh! The mm-hmm. Gathering. Okay, I like that. <laughs> sure. So, and, and since, since, I came, that, since, since that idea came up here, any mm-hmm. licensing and royalty fees, I mean, it was it, 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 they an heir to us? Mm-hmm. Thank you. Absolutely. Yes. We own Yu-Gi-Oh! Now it's weird. That's yeah, how it works. That, 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 we we stake to claim. <laughs> <laughs> it's like mining. Um, We're just staking a claim. It, totally. Um, and uh, uh, for clarity, Yu-Gi-Oh! Reigns, the current Yu-Gi-Oh! series, is still ongoing, so it's not going to replace that, apparently. Um, but we, we don't, in other words, they haven't announced that's ending. Maybe this will replace it, maybe it won't, but we don't know. Is it a new series, or is it a one-shot it's a celebration? New, it, um, they, they said it's going to be a, um, a, new, a new anime, and they're calling it a series. Mm. So, I don't know. And, and again... Could be one, could be the other, but they haven't they're, said one way or the other. They're earning enough, I'm sure, to run two series simultaneously. Yu-Gi-Oh's doing fairly well. Seems to me. International market? Japan market? Mm. Or where? I, yes. Hmm. As far as I can tell, Yu- Yu-Gi-Oh's, that train's not slowing down. Hmm. So, man. Which I don't have a lot of contact with with youthful players of Yu-Gi-Oh to know where its popularity mm-hmm. lies in the American youth. I certainly see it like at gaming conventions. There are folks doing Yu-Gi-Oh tournaments still. Okay. So, you know, yeah. Um, I mean, they're still making anime, you know, constantly. So yeah, I mean, it must be some, somebody's paying the bills. Mm-hmm. It's good. Totally. Uh, no complaints there. Um, all right, moving on to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics, which are coming up soon. Yay! Um, this is one year before the Summer Olympics begin, and they are uh, kicking that off with a live unveiling of the official countdown clock and messages from the athletes around the world. Um, the official design was revealed this week. Um, plus a video of the creation process. That's actually interesting. I like to of watch the that. design creation. The, the, the creation of the the medals. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever known that there was anything mm-hmm. like super special about the creation of the medals. They were stamped Be- out because they're being made from recycled electronics. Yeah. They will be 100 percent sustainable. Um, wow. Made from metals harvested from old mobile phones and cell phones I and so s- forth. I swear, I almost saw something that might have been related to that. Showed mm. somebody with a crucible 
melting circuit boards down and they, uh, it, they were not just like your standard circuit boards they mm -hmm. were like large circuitry gold colored interesting and they were saying they were harvesting the metal out of it and mm -hmm. i wonder if that was related to it yep interesting yeah absolutely um there's also of course the official launch video which is anime and it features awesome. <laughs> I'm sure it'd be cool. it features their mascot character which is sort of a Sort of like a Funko Pop sort of scale um, mascot character. So big head, tiny body, very chibi in style. Yeah, Cat ears. Yeah. yeah. Um, all, and he, he, it, I don't know if it's a he or she or an it, is. Um, in uh, this new eight day and age, it is, it is an it. It is true. It, it applies to everyone <laughs> and anyone. Um, and it is basically, uh, you know, going out on the field and preparing for track and field and like throwing a, you know, lance and all those various oh, things. It's going okay. through all the various motions. Um, pretty cool, pretty awesome. Nicely animated. Um, it shows uh, two animated mascots, actually, which were show chosen by school students throughout Japan in March. Oh, cool. They're participating in various summer Olympic sports. So very cute, very fun, and clearly celebrating the upcoming Olympics. Good. Yeah. Which I imagine it must have been very interesting to get enough venue space in Tokyo. Yes. The completely dense, giant city to put any number of events. Well, they were mentioning at the con, I went to a panel um, for Comiket, and they said, Comiket's getting partially moved out of their space because of the Olympics. They're in August every year. Can't do that anymore. Can't do that this year. What are they going to put? I mean, Comiket's a, it's a, it is a thing that's already a thing. Right. I mean, it's like the building doesn't, you can't move part of it. So they... Are they housing people in it? Uh, <laughs> Um, I do not know, um, but I, I do know that they're only going to be using par a part of Tokyo Big Site, and they're going to be using part of another building nearby, and they're going to be basically connecting the two with a pedestrian avenue. Um, wow. So the cosplayers can move between the others without having to, to you know, de-dress and redress uh, wow. their costumes. Um, wow. Because of just capacity, right? Imagine hiking across that pedestrian area in cosplay in Tokyo in August. One and a half kilometers. Oh. Yeah. Um, but at I least you don't have to. Well, they they've said that basically um, that area will be part of Comicat, essentially that entire thoroughfare, so they can control it, so they can have you know again folks you know doing traffic control and so forth. Yeah, and I mean that's going to be kind of cool. It's inconvenient that it's having yeah. to be that done that and, way, and, but it will be kind of cool to see how they engineer <laughs> that. Totally, and they're moving it to May, just to be clear, so that they're not in the same space, but still the you know their availability mm -hmm. is limited. Leading up to the Olympics, so they can all go out for soccer or watching after yeah, after yeah, cosplay. Exactly right, because there's not enough people, not enough things going on. Yeah, in uh, Tokyo at any given point in time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so good luck with that. Um, but that's gonna be that's gonna be interesting. Um, moving on to um, a some political news, which we don't often do yeah. on this program. Yeah, I saw this snippet and I was waiting to hear about it. Sounds <laughs> really interesting. Uh, so Taro Yamada, who is the leader of the Party to Protect Freedom of Expression has won a seat in the Japanese House of Counselors on Sunday, so last Sunday. Um, very popular on social media, where he posts political content campaigning for internet privacy, freedom of speech, that kind of stuff. Um, he even has his own Vocaloid theme song. Wow. Yeah. That's kind of cool. <laughs> Which he broadcasts from his car during campaigning. You know how they have the oh, cars the going down with a little... Yeah. The, oh, <laughs> Imagine that going wow, down the street. Wow, how 1980s anime. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and his campaign for this election focused on otaku-relevant topics, um, including opposition of piracy sites and support of legalizing derivative fan works like Dojinshi and uh, fan fiction. Okay. We've seen some of that. So legalizing it? It's, do they, like, mm -hmm. enforce against Dojinshi? Um, it depends. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's one of the... I think, um, I think, so, from what I understand, Dojinshi are... Um, technically um, illegal, but recognized in a gray area that, um, th that is essentially unenforceable. It, it is recognized as a fan work and not a um, uh, uh, not Ageism piracy in piracy. the classic okay. sense, right? Essentially, if you are profiting off of it, then it is piracy. If you're not profiting off, off it, it is a fan work. So, for example, the, the reason Comic Cat can work is because, and this was again in the panel, um, in terms of raw num in terms of uh, raw dollars spent, um, sixty five percent of the Dojinchi circles at Kamaket lose money. Okay. Uh, Fifteen percent break even, and the other twenty five percent make some profit, and that's purely um, in terms of 
print costs and costs of going to uh, comic and so forth, you know, minus um, the transaction of of selling their their energy, right? Okay. Um, when you factor in the time spent making the energy, yeah. arguably nobody makes money off of comic and that is the idea. Is that well, you know? If, if I understand anything from anime, they mm-hmm. only charge like two hundred and fifty yen for right. each one. Mm-hmm. So I mean, if I don't think anime would have done me wrong, right? So <laughs> no. I would imagine. Then does that put those who are at a marginal profit then in the piracy department, and that everybody else is like, ah, you're okay because you're not doing it right. <laughs> and and I think that's that's part of this whole legalization thing. Is it's like mm-hmm. okay, you know, if you make it big then there should be laws in place to protect you to say, you know, you're not intentionally, right, you're not intentionally breaking the law. You're making this fan thing. Right. Just that everybody wants it now. And so there should be protections in place to say, okay, you know, you're in this, this particular uh, place as opposed to, oh, you're now a pirate and, you know, you know whack, whack a mole. Yeah, time to go to jail. Right. Um, so, again, we'll, we'll, we'll see where that goes. <laughs> but that's kind of where he's campaigning. Um, also campaigning for improvement of working conditions in the anime industry. Oh yes, mm-hmm. but old solely. It's so is it solely related to anime? Industry? I'm sure he's committing for other things, but these are the things remarkable for, for Otaku that he's okay. kind of talking about. Because I think I told you the story about the mm. the twenty something salary woman, who it was a it was a story I had read. It was it was a Facebook story mm-hmm. that I had read through there that it talked about her eighty hour work weeks and her lack of life and mm. her making sort of these desperate pleas to her mom and about how she was miserable. Until finally she just, she couldn't handle it anymore. Mm. And her death, her mother is trying to use that as a wake up call to, Mm. we need to change how industry works. We need to change how office culture works. We Mm -hmm. need people to not be harassed and, and browbeaten to stay at the job for so many hours and become physically exhausted. Yeah. So if, you know, if that is part of a greater campaign, I, Mm -hmm. I, that will be very interesting to see. Yeah. Absolutely, a um, change of culture for the for for Japan that's been definitely pretty much ingrained for a long time, and yeah. he's got a big hill to climb. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and in fairness, it's one of those things that is, um, as I understand it, changing culturally in Japan, where you know that is and has been a big thing, but a lot of companies are starting to shift away from that kind of that uh, mindset. But it is a it, you know it's it's turning the cruise liner. Right, it's gonna take a while. <laughs> There's an iceberg ahead. We really are gonna be going slow to get this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, good luck there. Um, but but yeah, cool to see that kind of stuff going. Um, well, I mean, in, in 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 a very organized uh, uh, and pro social society, mm. you would kind of think that the best interest of all is for something to change that way everyone participates Mm -hmm. in the going forward versus having people be so distressed it causes interruptions across everywhere because your friends and your family are impacted and Mm -hmm. your business place is impacted now that they've lost a valuable worker. So, you know what I mean? You would think that that would move a little bit. The ocean liner would turn a slight bit faster knowing that collectively it's much better to move forward with a change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wilson. Yeah, here's hoping. Um, moving on to, uh, <laughs> yeah, this. Um, what, what happened? Hold on. Hold on. Something happened. A thing. Something happened. A thing happened, we're, which we're fixing now. Oh, there we yeah. go. So. I just got much better looking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, the um, so Levi and Aaron are featured in a new ad campaign by Santan Pharmaceuticals. Um, for an eye care product, which targets fatigue from screen use, and um, according to a survey of 512 adults, eyes that appear tired give off a negative image of being unhealthy or even lacking motivation. Oh. Can't have that. Can't lack motivation. Um, so then in the new ads, the Attack on Titan characters use Suntan's eye drops to transform their tired and healthy eyes, unhealthy eyes, to bright and sparkling, as seen here. <laughs> <laughs> and wow. it gets better at a Shibuya department store they'll be hosting a special event on August 1st where participants enter a virtual reality scene with within a colossal titan who squeezes eye drops from above the players must catch the drops from underneath to receive points in a commemorative photo 
and this is day one of the new Japanese game show. <laughs> that just begs for like Titan Drop. Let's who can win the points. Like, oh, here we go. That's wow. Uh huh. Tired you. eyes make you look like your you lack motivation. Mm-hmm. Wow. And thus that you are in Attack on Titan. So wow. you want to avoid that at all costs. It is one of the more impressive um, synergies. I, I've I've come across it, it. It it's just so interesting on like so many ways because yeah. it plays so culturally on the idea of like the impression that you're giving, right? And that you want to be seen as a contributor, mm-hmm. and that now if you have tired eyes, you're not contributing, and you're <laughs> you're, you're a less of a person because your eyes are tired, right? And this product is the solution to it. You're like, <laughs> Wow, that's just really kind of gr- that's and like brutal. <laughs> the Attack on Titan characters look tired all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's they're true. Titans. I mean, it's or, well. I wonder if they're going to have Titan drops now too. Yeah, possible. Like, oh, is your Titan tired? <laughs> do, do they need to look peppy to destroy uh, a city? Here we go. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't like fighting Titans that have the bags under their eyes because mm-hmm. I feel they're not giving their hundred percent. Exactly, and mm-hmm. they're, they're easy to defeat. We've got to stop that. Yeah, we really do. <laughs> I just was there no better character to choose from? <laughs> I, not that I'm sure that somebody on their staff was like, "This is the I love Attack on Titan. Let's use this." Mm-hmm. But uh, there had to have been something that was like eye related. I mean, mm-hmm. you've got so many like glasses wearing people in right. shows, mm-hmm. and there are points in shows where people talk about glasses. Mm-hmm. So you would think you could there some how would you get one of those? Versus Attack on Titan, I'm not really sure I see too many people in the bits and pieces I've watched that have glasses mm-hmm. or look like they need eye care. But but to be, <laughs> to, to be fair, this isn't about glasses. Well, but eyes, meaning I'm right, just trying right. to think of some okay. reason mm-hmm. to focus on eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, barring b- any blind characters, of which I'm not mm-hmm. currently aware of. Um, and yeah, there's got to be some Dragon Ball Z character that has... Some vision issue. Mm-hmm. But, yep. you know, and I'm, I'm sure ones that are totally on point are probably not as popular as Attack on Titan yep. and I'm I, I'm damn sure that pardon my French that mm-hmm. um, Attack on Titan studio people were like yes money yep dump truck money mm-hmm. yes sure you want a character what character would you like <laughs> give me any of them sufficiently large amounts of yen gets you any character you want yep <laughs> like okay well mm-hmm. That's what shilling for uh, companies works about. <laughs> and in fairness, this is not the wackiest commercial ever made in oh, Japan. Oh, no. There was a panel, actually, on really... It was an 18-plus panel mm. that was at, at Otakon that was exactly crazy Japanese commercials. <laughs> what are they selling? <laughs> so, yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh,